The year is 1994. O.J. Simpson can't find his favorite glove. Nancy Kerrigan fell down and went boom. And Northern Los Angeles is getting eaten alive by Mother Earth. But one good thing did come out of 1994. The birth of Angie. Say hello to my new little friend, the byproduct of Tokina and Anjanu. This is Angie. Angie is made of aluminum alloy with an internal zoom barrel with a 28 to 70 millimeter focal range, an f2.6 aperture, 77 millimeter filter threads, a dampened manual focusing ring with an autofocus clutch. And I call her Angie because she was designed by one of the best cinema lens manufacturers in the game, Anjanu. This is the first generation of the Tokina ATX Pro 28 to 70 millimeter f2.6 lens, and she's damn near parfocal. So I first found out about this Tokina zoom lens from our DP friend, John Schweigard. He was on the channel last year sharing with us his awesome exposure tips for when he shoots day and night exteriors. And if you haven't seen that playlist yet, I highly recommend it. Music videos that John has shot have gone viral. So I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you haven't seen that series yet. I'll leave a link down in the description below. So John told me back then that this Tokina zoom lens is known as the poor man's ingenue, mainly for its origin story, but also just for its amazing abilities and performance. And this lens has a lot of characteristics that you really only find in true cinema lenses. Just one of those characteristics is its ability to be damn near parfocal. For those of you that don't know, parfocal is essential for maintaining sharp focus when doing those whip zooms in and out. And it's pretty damn handy for all my documentary shooters. So ever since John told me about this lens, I have been researching it like crazy. I had some alerts for it on all the local markets here in LA, but then I just kind of forgot about it for a while until I saw this video right here from Vimeo user account R73. I'm gonna leave links to this down in the description below, but pretty much after watching those videos, I was fully ready to pull the trigger on this Tokina zoom lens. And I just happened to get lucky with this one. I found it from a little camera shop online. It came with this authentic Tokina leather case, the original Tokina lens hood, and even the original patented warranty card. So this lens dropped in 1994 from Tokina, but prior to that, in the earlier, early 90s, Anjanu used to be a consumer brand for camera lenses, and right before they bowed out and went strictly to the higher tier of film cinematography lenses, they released their very last consumer lens, which just happened to be a 28 to 70 millimeter zoom that had a consistent f2.6 aperture. So as the legend goes, some people believe Tokina was helping Anjanu develop their last consumer lens because up to that point, Anjanu hadn't developed any lenses with autofocus. So some people believe that Tokina was actually in on the original design, while others just believe that Tokina simply bought the blueprints from Anjanu after they left the consumer market. Either way, not long after, Tokina released their own 28 to 70 millimeter f2.6 lens. Now there are two different generations of this specific Tokina zoom lens, and the way to tell the difference between the two is that the first generation, which is the one I have here, comes with a screw-on hood mount, while the Mark II version, which came out two years later, has a bayonet hood mount. 
but beyond that, they're pretty damn identical from the outside. The biggest difference on the inside is with the second generation, Tokina added a newer optical element with different lens coatings. So there is a lot of debate out there online between which generation is better, the first or the second, but they both supposedly followed the blueprints of that original Ingenue design. However, if you look at the original Ingenue and then you look at the first generation Tokina, you can see the similarities are pretty damn spot on. They both have the screw on hood mount. Their focus marks are the same distance. You can see that both of their near focus is two and a half feet. They're both Nikon mount. The only real difference seems to be that Ingenue were able to get that F 2.6 consistent throughout the entire zoom range. For me, I base my decision solely on the fact that the one that Vimeo user R73 was using in his test videos was the first generation. So that's the one I seeked out as well. So here we are. So obviously, as you can see, I've made some mods to this just to make it easier in my own workflow. It was originally a Nikon mount and I've adapted it to EF. I've added both a focus gear and a zoom gear, both from followfocusgears.com. And my most favorite part is this custom laser engraved cap from Simod Lens. So you all already know my extreme fondness for Simod Lens. And after the shutdown, they are returning with something really cool for all filmers. You can now get these custom laser engraved caps in aluminum. So you know me, I just had to get the Dog Times logo up on there and of course the lens nickname because I'm nerdy like that. It has a really nice bezeled grip on the edge and my favorite part is the suction on the inside. So it just connects to the 80 millimeter ring so well. And of course I also have this Simod 80 millimeter step up ring so I can use it with my wooden camera map box. So when you research this Tokina Angie lens online, you'll see there's a lot of debate, a lot of people talking about how it's not very sharp wide open or that it seems to be better performing at the middle focal lengths. But as is the case with all lenses, not every copy is going to be identical. However, with this copy that I have, it has been phenomenal at all focal lengths, even wide open. And keep in mind, I'm shooting on the Metabone, so technically that's like shooting at an F2. I have not been disappointed at all. But just a quick note about that f2.6 that's really just a marketing ploy on tokina's part what's interesting is that the original ingenue actually does have a consistent f2.6 the entire zoom range while the tokina jumps to 2.8 as soon as you hit around 35 millimeters but from there on it is a consistent 2.8 throughout the rest of the zoom range now what you may notice is that the japanese versions of the first and second generations they don't even say 2.6 they just market it as a straight up 2.8 and I guess it makes sense because realistically 2.6 is only a 10% difference. Now you might be asking why even waste time with the Tokina? Why not just seek out and find the original Ingenue? Well, find is going to be your keyword there. That lens is extremely rare. And when you do find it, it's gonna cost you about five times the amount of what the Tokina goes for. So just one quick note about the parfocal abilities. First of all, it is pretty damn close, especially at f4. But one thing I noticed in performing is that when I zoom all the way in at 70 mil, set the focus there with my focus peaking on, and then when I whip out at 28, make little minor tweaks, and then it's pretty spot on whipping back and forth. But sometimes I don't even have to do that, even when it's wide open. So obviously it's not a true parfocal, but I mean, it performs so damn well, even wide open. But just keep in mind that it does perform better from the 35 to 70 range and I think that's primarily because of that little tiny jump that happens from f2.6 to f2.8 when you go from 28 to 35 millimeters. The main thing that is really extraordinary to me about this Tokina zoom lens is it's almost zero focus breathing. I don't even notice focus breathing at all at any of the focal lengths. It really is astonishing and it really puts my contact Zeiss primes to shame. Another thing that really jumps out at me with this lens and one of the things that John loved about it as well is the amazing flares you get with this lens. They are so vivid and for lack of a better word, they're cinematic. It gives these really awesome flares with these little orbs that you really don't find in this price range of lenses. You really can't even find it in any of your old photo lenses no matter how unique they are. Another cool feature is that this lens does not extend in size when you zoom in and out or when you're focusing. So what happens with a lot of vintage lenses, when you turn the focus barrel, either the entire front element will spin 
or it extends in size. This is not the case with this Tokina Angie lens. This is especially cool for when using it with my wooden camera map box. Something else I like about the Focus is that the Focus gear itself is dampened really well. It's super smooth, but the one downside of it is it has a really small focus throw. It's almost as bad as the Sigma 18 to 35, not quite as bad as that, but not a whole lot better either. You literally only have about two inches to go from near focus to infinity, and that is tiny. It's so bad that I almost wanted to jump off a building when trying to execute this Zolly shot. Now I understand the biggest headache of this is the fact that I'm trying to perform this Zolly shot all by myself. So I'm pushing the dolly, I'm operating the zoom control, and I'm pulling my own focus. So I would never recommend anyone to try to do a Zolly shot on their own. Uh, it's a huge headache. <laughs> and as you can see here, I was trying to pull this off by using my manual follow focus in conjunction with my Tilt the Nucleus Nano. Now I literally did over seven 70 takes of this, I think 73 takes total. I was ready to blow my brains out. So again, I don't recommend trying to do a Zolly shot on your own. And I definitely was not satisfied with any 73 of those takes. As you can imagine, they all pretty much sucked, but there were two that were somewhat acceptable, I guess. Um, so here's the one I just decided to include in the video. And as you'll tell, it's definitely not perfect. The downside of it all is that the Zolly effect doesn't even start happening until halfway through the shot. So the biggest issue with this is that the zoom barrel is not very smooth. It, it's dampened, but it's dampened much heavier than the focus barrel. So another problem with it is that the throw on the zoom is like double what the throw on the focus is. So that was even more of a mind screw because I'm literally, you know, pulling both wheels at the same time while pushing the dolly down the track. So again, it was a little bit of a mind screw and I just hocked it up to a good experience, I guess. So when it comes to doing zolly shots like that, it is going to be a little bit of a problem just because the zoom ring is so damp but they actually did that on purpose and they did that so your focal lengths wouldn't slip on you. So again, this seems like to be a pretty awesome lens for my documentary shooters. Another characteristic that I really am in love with this lens is the color rendering. The colors are so gorgeous on this lens. It's probably another reason why the flares look so damn good. So much like my Zeiss lineup, this Tokina Zoom does live on the cooler range. And I first noticed it when I was comparing it to my Sigma Art 18 to 35. And as you can see here on the vector scope, the Sigma is leaning more towards the green, while my Tokina is just dead center, spreading all the colors evenly. Another little minor downside to this lens, other than that really short focus throw, is it is a beefy ass tank. Like I said in the intro, it is all aluminum aluminum alloy. Now just for comparison here, the Sigma Art 18 to 35 comes in at one pound 14 ounces. That's without the caps of course, where this Tokina Zoom is just under that at one pound 13.6 ounces. Now I do realize I have these little uh, gears on here, but they're not metal. So I can't imagine they're adding that much weight at all. So in terms of size, I think these two lenses do make a pretty decent little zoom duo. The minor color mismatch between the two is so minimal, I think it would be a fairly easy fix in post. And I think they would actually perform pretty well next to each other in a multicam setting if you absolutely had to. But as far as just your all around workhorse, one standard zoom lens that you take with you everywhere, I think this is a killer option. The colors are beautiful. Those flares are breathtaking. There's no focus breathing. I mean, almost zero focus breathing. It's still sharp, but has a lot of nice vintage characteristics. And here's the best part when it comes to vintage zoom lenses. Unlike most vintage zooms, especially Zeiss zoom lenses, you don't have to be bothered with that annoying push-pull mechanism or worry about getting that dreaded zoom creep over time. And realistically, if you're looking at modern lenses, I know a lot of people like to go modern, but here's the deal. Modern lenses, you're never going to have as much character as you get from something like a lens like like this. I mean, when you look at everything this has to offer, modern coatings nowadays are not gonna give you flares like what you get out of this, especially in the under $1,000 range. It has almost no focus breathing. I cannot stress that enough. I just think this is a killer documentary beast of a lens. There was no other filtration used here other than ND. And if you want to check out what NDs I used, it's my newest set of Firecrest IR NDs. I'm going to have a link to their website down below. But I've also put in the description several different eBay links to some of these Angie lenses if you want to check them out for yourself. Hey, if you're a fan of the channel and like to the support, there's a couple different ways you can do that. The first and easiest way is to just hit that 
subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell so you get the latest videos as soon as they're dropped. But if you wanna go above and beyond that and be a part of a daily filmmaking conversation, then I invite you to join the Dog Times community over on Patreon. That is where once a week I release an exclusive members only video, breaking down projects, talking gear, and sharing real world experiences as a DIY indie filmmaker in Los Angeles. But my favorite part about the Patreon is the conversations happening over on Discord. That is where you will be connected with like-minded filmmakers and have instant access to learning ways to improve your own skills so you feel more confident about working on set as a professional. So welcome to the Dog Times community and I'll chat with you soon.